that comets have the ability to affect the energy output of the sun. When that happens, we then get uh, a, a severe weather on Earth. So there's many aspects to the, the effects that these large comets can have on the solar system and on planet Earth. But the bottom line is comets are not dirty snowballs. They are a very energetic plasma interaction of an asteroidal rocky body with the solar electric field. Joining me now is F. Michael Maloof, former security policy analyst in the office of the Secretary of Defense and author of the book, A Nation Forsaken, EMP, The Escalating Threat of an American Catastrophe. Michael, welcome. Thank you. Uh, just to define terms, electromagnetic <coughs> magnetic pulse? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an, an intense burst of electromagnetic uh, particles uh, that come descending on down and that can absolutely destroy all of our electronics if they're unprotected. Isn't um, Back in the 80s, the, the northeastern power grid shut down one day and nobody mm -hmm. knew why. And mm -hmm. it turned out later it was a bunch of particles coming from the sun, as mm -hmm. I recall. Yeah. Isn't that a kind of a mini example of EMP? Well, we have a, a mini EMP could be from a solar burst. Uh, we're, we're now going through one of our most intense periods, 11-year uh, cycle of the sun. And uh, NASA has raised all kinds of concerns about that, especially if we were to get a direct hit. They're estimating that the cost could be upwards of $2 trillion, uh, affect about 164 million people, take four to 10 years to recover if we get a direct hit. Wow. Yeah. And, that's, and that's basically it comes out of a sunspot. And so yes. it just, it's like yes. the, the sun is blowing it out somewhere in that 360 well, degrees. And if we happen to wander through that. Exactly. If it comes from approximately the middle of the sun, it could, uh, result in a direct hit on, on Earth. Some of these solar flares can be two to three times larger than the Earth itself. Wow. And what would it do? It will uh, fry your electronics. You see, the United States is, is a technology-based society, whether it's our uh, uh, internet, our telecommunications. We have very critical infrastructures. They're all dependent upon electronics, the national grid system. But when the electricity goes out, the water goes out, the, the sanitation systems everything, go out. Everything. Um, we couldn't go without very, very long. My friend, Professor James McKinney. Professor McKinney is a credentialed astrophysicist, a uh, mathematician who uh, cracked a hey, several thousand year old mathematical uh, puzzle <laughs> in a, a couple of years ago. Congratulations, Jim. Comet ice on approach and has now passed Mars. Uh, Mars went comet, and uh, I, I observed it. I had other people observe it, and uh, it might be one of the reasons that the government shut down because it the Mars the coma around Mars is now extremely visible. This is an event we have not seen in thousands. Years. In fact, the contribution of charged particles from the sun to comet activity is now acknowledged. It happened in 2012 when the distinguished Russian astronomer Subban Ibadov's paper appeared in the journal Advances in Space Research. Professor Ibadov's paper described a comet nucleus responding to charged particles from the sun. His calculated capacitor-like discharges were equivalent to observed energies of comet flaring in ground-based observations of comets. 
Now that the door has been opened to discussion of the sun's electrical role in comet discharging, how long can that role be overlooked in comet investigations? Taken as a whole, the message of deep impact is remarkably consistent. But why did the crucial findings all come as a surprise to comet scientists? And what does it mean that these surprises were the explicit predictions of the electric model? Deep Impact provided us with a stunning confirmation of the electric comet, confirming as well the larger electrical environment of the sun. 